What up, snitches? I'm the Animaniac, and my next stop on this Disney movie marathon brings me to a couple in England. I'm checking out the marvel that is... 101 Dalmatians. Directed by Clyde Geronimi, Hamilton Lusk, and Wolfgang Reitherman, and based on the book of the same name by Dodie Smith, it's about a couple of Dalmatians rescuing their puppies from a woman who wants to make fur coats out of them. This was another Disney movie based off a relatively modern book, when Smith released The 101 Dalmatians in 1956. Walt read the book a year later, immediately bought the rights, and assigned Bill Peet to write the screenplay, who, after it was written, said it was great and appointed Bill as a voice director. When Smith was sent a copy of the script and some drawings of the characters, she complimented Pete's script, saying he improved her story and illustrations. After the box office disappointment of Sleeping Beauty, there was talk of closing the animation studio's doors because of how expensive the process of making animated movies is. But Walt still loved to make them as it was what he built the company off of. Yube It Works, at the time the movie was being made, was experimenting with a different animation technique where he modified a Xerox camera to transfer the animator's drawings to animation cells in order to save time and money, and to preserve the spontaneity of the pencil sketches. But you could still see the black sketch lines in the final product. Before Dalmatians, the technique was used partially in Sleeping Beauty. Hell if I could spot it. When Disney saw the finished film, he hated how it looked and said it didn't have the fantasy element present in their previous films. This was after he signed off on Ken Anderson using the technique for the film. Though he had a... whatever, I don't care... attitude when he signed off on it. Walt did eventually forgive Ken before he passed away. Going back to when Dalmatians premiered, it was critically acclaimed, calling it the best since Snow White and the closest to a real Disney film since those days. The author of the book it was based on loved the film when she saw it, and critics still remain positive about it to this day, including famous critics Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert when they liked it, though they didn't think of it as a great Disney movie. The American Film Institute included Corella DeVille in their list of heroes and villains, and it currently holds a Rotten Tomatoes critical score of 98%. Dalmatians did even better than Sleeping Beauty in the box office during its initial run, and after multiple reissues from 1969 to 1991 and adjusting for inflation, its lifetime gross comes to a little over $900 million. And Disney occasionally revisits this franchise to this day. The technique they used for the film's animation made its line work very sketchy and the backgrounds look like they were filled in with watercolors. This is reminding me of... oh man, I don't think I've ever mentioned this show in a while, but... The Backgrounds of Ginger Snaps. Oh god, I remember that show. <laughs> I should probably revisit it sometime. Anyway, because of what they could do with the technique they were using, during this time they would sometimes reuse assets like... You would see three dogs from Lady and the Tramp in here. And they'd recycle animation, like when Pongo's owner smokes on his pipe when he's trying to get him and Anita together. And when Cruella drives by looking for the Dalmatians three times. The technique was a way for the company to save money on animation, as previously shown. And it gave the movies of this period a good and easily recognizable style. Cruella de Vil stands out as a very memorable villain with her lanky design, if you remove her giant coat, and her lack of subtlety with her motives, when she bursts through the door rushing around looking for the puppies. Since she couldn't buy them off the couple, she hires two thugs to force their way into the house and steal them. During this, I wish they would have taken the government commission cleaners bit seriously. It would have been really funny. And if anything in the plan went wrong, Cruella can have the thugs thrown in jail since they're the ones who did the deed, and she can wash her hands by denying she knows them. Clever woman. The crooks she hired are the typical tall one who thinks he's smart, and the short fat one who's belittled by the tall guy thinking he's dumb. Even if what one of the things he said was spot on from what we're seeing in the movie. And after these two buffoons, there's not a lot that stuck out. The Dalmatian couple are serviceable. I did at least care about them getting their puppies back. And the human couple, I just kind of forgot about during the film. But seeing how it's from the point of view of the dogs, it is to be expected that the humans won't get much love. Another downside to this film is that the middle, 
the dogs calling the colonel and the Dalmatians making the journey back while avoiding Cruella and her cronies can feel a little long and mundane when it's supposed to have a feeling of tension, hoping that these dogs can avoid their grasp and starvation and make it home safely. 101 Dalmatians was an okay little film. The dogs were cute, Corella Deville was a riot, and the movie's art style is a nice change from what Disney were known for at that time. Guys, what are your thoughts about these beautiful spotty dogs? Comment below. If you guys want to stay updated on future videos and see some cool artwork, be sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, and DeviantArt, and be sure to subscribe to my backup channel over on BitChute. The links are in the description, and if you want to be the first to know when a new video will be up, ring that bell after you subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.